Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. Unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you've heard of something related to artificial intelligence, whether it's ChatGPT, uh, Nvidia stock exploding, self-driving cars, the ongoing microchip war. There's a ton of stuff being discussed around AI right now. Most of these things are related to one thing and that thing is artificial intelligence. In this video, we're going to break down what AI is, the pros and cons of investing in AI, and also the easiest way for you to get investment exposure to this new trend. Stay tuned. Okay, so before we get into the investment side of things, let's break down what is AI, let's define it. So AI is the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines, especially computer systems. So as AI's capabilities continue to improve, investors are trying to figure out the best ways to capitalize on this very important growth industry. So why is all this important anyway? So AI has the potential to shape and disrupt entire industries in the near future, and it has the potential to change how we live, work, and entertain ourselves. It is no different than any other new technology in the past, just like railroads, the light bulb, uh, personal computer, and the internet. There are many ways to invest in AI, but while some companies will have wild success as we're starting to see, other early adopters will fail. So let's look at the four different types of AI. So let's talk about the first one, which is reactive AI. So reactive AI is considered the most basic form of AI. This form of AI cannot learn from previous actions. So these are things like uh, spam filters from your email, for example. Uh, the second one is limited memory. So this is the next most evolved form of AI. It's able to learn from experience and it combines that with pre-programmed information uh, to complete different types of tasks. So say for example, this could be like uh, autonomous vehicles that learn from the movements of other cars around them. And it learns what to do and how to adapt to that environment. Uh, the third type of AI is theory of mind. So this refers to an AI with advanced decision-making capabilities. This is almost similar to humans. Uh, they can understand and remember emotions and adjust their behavior accordingly. And then finally, this is kind of like the uh, Terminator Doomsday example. So this is self-aware AI. This is considered the most sophisticated form of AI. It describes machines that are aware of their emotions and the emotions of those around them. This is kind of like the movie uh, Ex Machina, if you remember that one that came out a few years ago. Okay. So so let's jump into how to invest in AI. So before I get into the actual three methods, you have to realize that there's different strategies to investing in disruptive technology. So this is brand new or relatively new. You have to think about this like Facebook and MySpace, for example. Just because MySpace was more popular at one point doesn't mean that a newer or better product like Facebook, now known as Meta, uh, won't come out and disrupt your market share. So there's always gonna be some people who wanna invest directly in the companies that develop the AI, for example. And then there's other investors who wanna choose to invest in companies that will benefit the most from the wider adoption. So if you wanna use the personal computer as an example, you can either invest in Dell, the computer company, for example, or the people that actually make the microchips that go inside the Dell computers, for example. So with that being said, let's get into these three different ways that you can get exposure to AI pretty quickly and easily. So number one is obviously ETFs and mutual funds. So if you're watching Whiteboard Finance, of course, we're gonna talk about ETFs and mutual funds. So why not let the pros pick the stocks for you? So investing in ETFs and mutual funds, if you don't know, it allows you to own multiple AI companies within a single investment or multiple AI stocks within a single stock, if that makes sense. Think of it like a basket of stocks. So uh, some quick examples are iShares Exponential Technologies ETF. This is ticker symbol XT. This is a large cap fund that selects global stocks trying to disrupt their industries. So the disruption also includes AI tech stocks, which make up nearly half of the fund. The other half of the fund invests in healthcare and industrial stocks, which are also actively looking on how AI might make an outsized difference in their more mature industries. So this fund has an expense ratio of 0.46% and an annual dividend yield of 0.7%. Next, we have Robo Global Robotics and Automation Index. Uh, this is ticker symbol Robo, R-O-B-O. This invests in companies focused on robotics, automation, and artificial intelligence, and it invests in both growth and value stocks. This fund's expense ratio is 0.95%, a little bit on the higher side, and it has an annual dividend of only 0.17%. 
And then finally, we have Global X's Robotics and Artificial Intelligence ETF, BOTS, B-O-T-Z. So BOTS provides market cap selected and weighted exposure to companies involved in the development and production of robots and artificial intelligence. This is currently a $183 billion market cap fund with 44 holdings and expense ratio of 0.69%. So there's more than just these three, but these came up in my research time and time again. Um, we're gonna get into individual stocks next, but these are obviously the clear cut ETFs and mutual funds for you to look at. Okay, so now we're getting into individual companies, individual stocks, obviously a little bit uh, less diversified than an ETF or a mutual fund, but you have the potential for high risk, high reward. So number one, it's what we all think of when we think of AI, especially in the autonomous driving section, is Tesla. So Tesla is one of the most visible AI companies out there, and it's easy to understand why. The company uses AI to automate driving, which necessitates constant processing of data to identify other cars on the road, uh, road conditions, traffic signals, things like that, all the stuff we talked about in the previous slide. The second stock is NVIDIA, which has absolutely been on a tear. I believe it's like, 189% up year to date. Uh, but basically, if you don't know what NVIDIA is, it's a leader in AI and has a very strong position in the marketplace through generative artificial intelligence. Uh, this basically talks about algorithms that create new content in multiple output forms like audio, uh, computer code, images, text simulations, all that good stuff. So basically, NVIDIA has been exploding. Uh, we actually did uh, an analysis inside of Whiteboard Finance University. Shout out to Professor Nathan. Uh, he just did a complete analysis debating if NVIDIA is currently overvalued. So if you haven't joined Whiteboard Finance University yet, check out the link in the description below. Um, I will use a code, let's call it AI20, uh, for 20% off your membership forever. Uh, again, the link is in the description below. Uh, the third stock is Microsoft. So Microsoft has been a Whiteboard Finance fan favorite since basically 2017. Uh, they have invested $13 billion in AI initiatives, including an early $1 billion investment in OpenAI. Uh, so if you don't know what OpenAI is, uh, they're obviously related or created ChatGPT. Uh, it's now one of the most recognizable names in AI. But Microsoft has embedded AI into many of its systems, including uh, Bing Search Engine, which I don't know many people who use Bing, to be honest. Uh, Microsoft 360, uh, its sales and marketing tools, Xbox, and a bunch of other products. Uh, and then finally, we have Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, ticker symbol TSM. Uh, TSM is basically the world's largest chip maker, and it's another leading competitor in chip manufacturing for artificial intelligence. As AI grows, the need for robust computing is actually going to grow with it. So again, this is investing in the Dell or investing in the companies that put the chips in the Dell, just using that as an example. So TSM is a mature company that continues to also make chips for non-AI computer applications. So this may actually be um, a less risky play than others. And finally, we have startups and pre-IPO companies. So this is basically just what it sounds like. Startup companies that are new companies, uh, especially in a new and exciting field like AI. And then pre-IPO, which just stands for pre-initial public offering, uh, aka private companies. So this category is just what it sounds like. They're brand new companies. Uh, they typically get funding from venture capital, outside funding, and they aren't usually easily accessible to the general public to be able to be invested in. But before we dive deeper into the startup and pre-IPO section, uh, I wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor, Fundrise, who is changing the landscape for individuals to be able to invest in private and pre-IPO companies with their innovation fund. Fundrise is America's largest direct-to-consumer alternative investment platform. Since 2012, their mission has been to build a better financial system by empowering the individual. Fundrise makes it easier and more efficient than ever for anyone to invest in institutional quality alternative asset classes. Just just like venture capital, just like private credit and real estate all at the touch of a button. I personally have thousands of dollars invested with Fundrise since 2019. For the first time, investors of all sizes can use Fundrise to build a portfolio of private pre-IPO blue chip companies leading the AI revolution. From chat GPT to autonomous vehicles to disease research, the AI revolution is here. In fact, a recent PwC report predicts that AI will contribute more than $15 trillion to the global economy by 2030, more than the current output of China and India combined. A year ago, these AI companies would have been virtually impossible to invest in. Enter Fundrise's first of its kind venture product with an initial target offering of $1 billion engineered to serve all investors. Historically, investing in venture capital has come with extremely high investment requirements, making it virtually impossible for you, the regular person, to be able to invest. 
Now, Fundrise is launching a venture product built to serve investors of all sizes. Signing up for Fundrise is simple and only takes a few minutes. Sign up is smooth, transparent, and informative, providing investors a state-of-the-art platform. Once invested, you'll receive in-depth updates when we invest in portfolio companies as they grow. I personally use the barbell approach to investing. If you picture a barbell on one side, there are assets with a higher risk and reward profile. And on the other side, you have very conservative assets like T-bills or cash, for example. This venture opportunity is something that I've already invested in and placed it on this side of the barbell, focusing on asymmetric risk and reward. Check out the link in the description and sign up for Fundrise today. Thanks for watching that spot. It helps support the channel. I appreciate you. So now back to the startup section. So as I was saying, startup companies are often created in new and exciting fields, just like artificial intelligence and also machine learning, uh, especially when there's an opportunity to disrupt or improve other major industries. So as mentioned, these are companies that have been initially funded by VC investors, venture capital, then they're taken public to capitalize on their initial investment and raise more capital as the business grows uh, operations and they begin offering different products to wider customer base. So investing in startup companies is risky. The rewards for investing in a successful startup company can obviously be huge, but they can also fail. So there's examples of unicorns uh, that you know grow to be billion dollar companies, but there's also companies that you know flop and fail. So remember, as investors, we're always rewarded for the amount of risk we take on. Uh, you have T-bills on one side, you have start risky startup startups on the other. Think of it like a barbell. Okay, so let's wrap up this video with some of the pros and cons of investing in AI. So one of the pros is that AI is obviously a disruptive technology. It's got a ton of potential. It's expected to add billions, if not trillions of dollars in economic value over time. However, on the other side of this coin, it's hard to pick winners. So which one? So obviously you may go back to the ETFs or mutual funds example. Uh, you may not have skyrocket uh, returns like NVIDIA, for example, but you may also benefit from just having exposure to the space in general. The other pro is that most companies are trying to leverage the power of AI. So right now it's incredibly popular. It reminds me of the uh, crypto hype cycle just a few years ago when everyone was talking blockchain, 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 and then crypto, 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 and then you know NFTs are basically worth nothing now. Um, so are we in another hype cycle? I don't know, right? So the power of AI, which can lead to a lot of hype, it can also lead to a lot of these stocks already being worth less than they currently are valued at. So this leads to a bubble that can pop, so you need to actually be extra diligent in what you're investing in. So finally, uh, the final obvious pro is that the stocks that do well in the AI revolution could see incredibly large gains, as we've, as we've already seen with NVIDIA, as I mentioned just now. Um, however, there's still a lot of uncertainty around AI, especially around regulations. Um, so in a nutshell, you know, is this going to turn into the fourth stage of AI, which we talked about, where we're going to be discussing civil and human rights in regards to a robot? So if you think that sounds ridiculous, you know, come back to this video in 30 years. You know, maybe it's not so ridiculous. Uh, real quick, I just want to shout out Whiteboard Finance University. Uh, we're teaching the four pillars of wealth in the private community. There's too many things to talk about in this video, especially to end the video. But I just want to give you a heads up that our four pillars of wealth is basically money management, increasing your income, and investing in stocks and real estate, all proven wealth builders over the past 100 years. So check out uh, Whiteboard Finance University in the link below and also use the code AI20 to get 20% off. Thank you so much for watching and have a prosperous day. Okay, so I'm just gonna drop this bomb here at the end of the video. I hate to be like, not negative, but I, I genuinely believe this is gonna happen. Um, with the advent of technology, I feel like people are getting lonelier and lonelier to where AI you know, is going to replace you know, maybe pets or significant others or who knows. Um, at the end of the day, do you think there's going to be someone married to a uh, artificial, let's call it device. I'm not going to call it a robot. I'm not going to call it a chat bot. Uh, let's just say artificial device. Do you think that's going to turn into someone else's significant other within the next 30 years? Let me know what you think below. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this. Thanks again.